Hello there and welcome back to Gemma Movie Recap. Today I'm going to recap American Assassin, is a 2017 American action thriller film. Its plot follows Mitch Rapp, a man consumed by a desire for vengeance, meticulously plans his retribution against the jihadist cell responsible for the brutal murder of his girlfriend during a horrific beach massacre. But before we start, please support our channel by subscribing and click the bell icon for future notifications. Now, let's start. The movie opens with Mitch Rapp is capturing footage on the beach alongside his girlfriend Katrina as they enjoy a leisurely moment together. In a heartfelt gesture, Mitch presents his mother's engagement ring, expressing his intention to propose. Filled with joy, Katrina gladly accepts his proposal. Shortly thereafter, Mitch swiftly heads towards the bar to fetch some drinks, garnering applause from onlookers who witness the romantic moment. Tragically, the serenity of the beach is abruptly shattered when a group of radical jihadists emerges and initiates a gunfire attack on the unsuspecting beachgoers. In a desperate race against time, Mitch rushes towards Katrina, but tragically, she falls victim to the ruthless jihadist leader, Adnan Al-Mansur, succumbing to his fatal gunshot before Mitch can reach her. After a span of 18 months, Mitch finds himself residing alone in an apartment. Determined to enhance his physical capabilities, he devotes his time to kickboxing training, although his impulsive nature often leads to his expulsion from the classes. Meanwhile, Mitch engages in online conversations with Mansoor, driven by his desire to penetrate Mansoor's extremist group and exact vengeance upon all those accountable for Katrina's tragic demise. As their interactions unfold, Mansoor raises inquiries about the Islamic faith, unaware that their discussions are being closely monitored by CIA Deputy Director Irene Kennedy. Mitch receives an invitation to rendezvous with Mansoor at his concealed location, with Mansoor mistakenly believing that Mitch intends to join his extremist cell. Upon arrival, Mitch finds himself bound to a chair, but he quickly devises a plan to escape and enact his revenge by eliminating the entire cell. However, before he can execute his plan, a sudden intrusion occurs as a special forces team storms in and swiftly eliminates Mansoor and his cohorts. Filled with anger and driven by his intense emotions, Mitch seizes a knife and begins relentlessly stabbing Mansoor's lifeless body until he is forcefully restrained and pulled away from the gruesome act. Confined within an interrogation room, Mitch finds himself face to face with Kennedy, who possesses comprehensive knowledge about his history, including the tragic events involving Katrina and the car accident that claimed the lives of his parents when he was only 14. Consumed by an overwhelming thirst for revenge, Mitch's thoughts are fixated on this singular goal. Recognizing the potential in Mitch, Kennedy makes the crucial decision to enlist him in Orion, an exclusive black ops training program overseen by Stan Hurley, a seasoned veteran of the Cold War and a former Navy SEAL. Kennedy transports Mitch to Hurley's headquarters to initiate his training. Upon Mitch's arrival, Hurley promptly underestimates his potential as a recruit. As the training commences, Hurley instructs the recruits in various combat techniques, including a specific method for incapacitating opponents by targeting the throat, and that if they are on the verge of capture, they must put a bullet in their heads. You go down out there, you're a... In a simulated exercise set within a mock department store, the recruits are tasked with neutralizing designated targets. However, Mitch becomes excessively engrossed and repeatedly fires at the targets. Another exercise involves simulated targets, during which Hurley manipulates Mitch's emotions by unexpectedly placing Mansoor in his line of sight, even though Mansoor is not designated as a target. A group of individuals convenes to negotiate the sale of stolen weapons-grade plutonium obtained from a Russian nuclear facility. Among the prominent participants is an enigmatic figure referred to as Ghost. Suddenly, two police officers approach the van where the deal is taking place. Ghost cordially invites them inside, but swiftly eliminates both officers, followed by dispatching the other two buyers. He proceeds to open fire at the police present in the surrounding crowd before vanishing without a trace. Upon witnessing the news report, Hurley identifies Ghost as one of his former protégés, presumed dead after going rogue and reportedly killed in an airstrike. Under Hurley's orders, Kennedy dispatches his team to Turkey in pursuit of Ghost's potential buyer. The team rendezvous with their operative, Annika Ogden, who assumes the role of Mitch's wife to gather information about the primary buyer, Sharif. 
However, their operation takes a detrimental turn when their cover is compromised at a restaurant, leading to the tragic stabbing death of one of their team members. As a result, they fail to apprehend Sharif as he manages to escape before they can reach him. After extracting information through force from one of Sharif's henchmen, Mitch tails Sharif to his hotel. Silently infiltrating the room, a fierce gunfight ensues between Sheriff's goons and Hurley's team once they join Mitch. In Sheriff's quarters, Mitch discovers him pleading for mercy. However, in a momentary glimpse, Mitch hallucinates Mansoor standing in Sheriff's place, triggering him to execute Sheriff and seize his laptop. Despite Mitch's belief that he acted in accordance with his duty, Hurley reprimands him for disobeying orders. Furthermore, Hurley reveals a recorded video of Katrina prior to her death, fueling Mitch's anger. Hurley restrains him and underscores the importance of not allowing personal emotions to interfere with their mission. In Rome, the team focuses on gathering intelligence regarding a physicist capable of weaponizing the stolen plutonium. While staying at a hotel, Annika attends to one of Mitch's injuries. In a seemingly casual remark, she mentions their determination to capture Ghost. Intrigued by her knowledge of Ghost without his name being mentioned before, Mitch becomes suspicious. He confronts Annika in the bathroom, engaging in a physical altercation and accusing her of being a member of Iranian intelligence. Holding her underwater, Mitch applies pressure until she confesses, seeking to confirm his suspicions. Following Annika's capture, she is subjected to an interrogation. During the questioning, it is revealed that she is indeed a mole working for Iranian intelligence. However, Annika explains to Hurley that her true motive was to thwart Iranian hardliners who aimed to acquire the weapons-grade plutonium. She clarifies that her intention was to prevent these weapons from being used against Israel, potentially sparking a destructive conflict. Hurley arranges a meeting with his contact, who happens to be Annika's uncle, to address the situation involving Annika and the stolen plutonium. However, their meeting is abruptly interrupted when Ghost manages to infiltrate the location. In a swift and deadly act, Ghost eliminates Hurley's contact, leaving him dead. Moreover, Ghost successfully captures Hurley, taking him into custody or holding him captive. In a gruesome act of torture, Ghost ruthlessly inflicts pain on Hurley, resorting to pliers to forcefully remove his fingernails, all in an attempt to extract information about his team. Despite the excruciating torment, Hurley remains resolute and refuses to divulge any details. During the interrogation, Hurley addresses Ghost by his true name, Ronnie, aiming to unnerve him. Continuing his sadistic methods, Ghost proceeds to drop a spark plug into a bucket of water, placing it near Hurley's feet, heightening the threat and fear. However, in an unexpected turn of events, when Ghost's associates, the hardliners, arrive to claim the weapon, Hurley takes a daring stand. He warns them that Ghost is manipulating and deceiving them, ultimately playing them for his own gain. Unfazed by Hurley's revelation, Ghost ruthlessly shoots and eliminates the hardliners, eliminating any potential threats. He then seizes the weapon and makes his escape, leaving Hurley in a precarious situation. Two Mossad guards unexpectedly breach the security of the CIA safe house and seize Annika. However, Mitch swiftly intervenes, launching a rescue mission to save her. Determined and relentless, Mitch tracks down the guards and successfully rescues Annika from their clutches. Together, Mitch and Annika embark on a pursuit of ghosts through a network of tunnels, driven by their mission to apprehend him. However, in a desperate attempt to maintain control, Ghost seizes Annika, using her as a shield while holding her at gunpoint. Tragically, Annika takes a drastic measure to prevent Ghost from achieving his objectives, tragically shooting herself in the head. As Ghost escapes with the weapon, he proceeds to flee aboard a boat, leaving Mitch devastated and determined to bring Ghost to justice for his actions. Hurley deduces that Ghost intends to make a final stand at sea with the weapon. Upon learning about the imminent attack, the Sixth Fleet prepares their ships. Mitch embarks on a mission to confront Ghost, engaging in a fierce battle aboard the boat. Despite Ghost's initial advantage and stabbing Mitch, our protagonist manages to turn the tables and fatally strikes Ghost using the knife skills he learned from Hurley. <coughs> Mitch then proceeds to sail the boat out into the open sea as per Hurley's orders, who instructs him to dispose of the weapon by dropping it into the water. 
Just in the nick of time, Mitch climbs aboard the helicopter with Hurley, moments before an underwater explosion triggers a massive sinkhole that nearly engulfs the Navy's ships. Thankfully, everyone is ultimately rescued and brought to safety. After sustaining injuries, Hurley returns to the United States to receive medical treatment. While in the hospital, he watches a news report featuring General Rose Tammy, one of the hardliners, who is emerging as the leading candidate for the presidency in Iran. Rostami's televised speech is filled with threats of destroying America. In the next scene, we then see Rostami getting into an elevator. He turns around to see Mitch standing behind him, smiling. The end. Thanks for tuning in to this movie recap. I hope you found it enjoyable and insightful and that it helped you gain a better understanding of the story. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share your thoughts in the comments below. And remember to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on our latest movie recaps and other exciting content. Your support is crucial in helping us keep creating high quality videos like this one. Once again, thank you for watching and we can't wait to see you at our next one.